I am the Commissar. That's my name. Forged Alliance Forever. That's the game. And who have we got with a claim to fame? Eight players in the arena today on a 4v4 random map. We have one team up here and one team down here. Now that's sort of 10 or 11 o'clock, 4 or 5 o'clock. So because they don't have a clear north or south or east or west, this is Team 11's is and this is Team Tea Time. Going first in the air position for Team 11's is, this is Miles Gloriosus. Nice little Latin name there, we're going to see if he's as boastful a soldier as he claims to be. He is 1400 rated, he's Cybron in Fecal Brown. In this crater position, we have Gutzeitencraft. He's 1500 rated, he's UEF in orange. In front of him, in this central position, we have Snoog, 11's team highest rated player. He's 1900 rated and he's UEF in grey. And last but not least for team 11's is, down here at the bottom, we have Sim, or possibly Sim or Sigum, but I'm going to call him Sim for the sake of the simplicity. He's 1600 rated and Seraphim in yellow. And down here on Team Tea Time, in the air position, we have Pepes, 1400 rated and Cybron. He's in Mucus Brown. In the crater position, Early Doors, 1500 rated and Eon in grass green. Up here in the central position and going absolutely mad for spam factories, we have Gingerbread Man, their highest rated player at 1900 rated. He's playing UEF in Burgundy. And last but not least for Team Tea Time, we have Literal. He is 1600 rated and Eon in dark green. Quick look at the map. So there's reclaims scattered around just here and there and everywhere, but none of it a huge cluster. And what's really of interest is all of these mixes. This is only a 15k map. Look at it. There's mixes everywhere. Big expansion here, other expansions here, here, here. But on top of that, there's just singular mexes dotted across the entire map. So this is probably going to be quite a fast expansion game. And speaking of fast expansions, let's have a look at some early raiding. We've got Selene's out from Sim coming this way. But this raid looks very nice from Literal. He's got two pairs of Lab and Scout and good sight here is expanding rather unprotectedly into these tasty expansions getting a bit greedy and as such he might be about to lose some ngs to this raid down here that poor ng isn't going to be getting out of there especially not if he tries to start a mech rather than run away and reclaim so he dies up here this lab has killed this NG and is working on the mexes. That Celine there got somebody, but I don't know who, probably an expanding engineer from here, but early doors com finds it and catches it. And this Celine might get these engineers if it's lucky. We'll check back on it in a moment. Over here. A tank has been sent with a scout to try and counter this raiding. And Gutsite is following this lab, but of course the lab is faster than the tank, and so he might just escape. Meanwhile, Literal brings up his other lab to help out, and he's got more labs coming up, so lots of labbery from Literal. Ooh, this could be dangerous. They are heading straight for that Selene, those NGs we noted earlier.
and the labs move in and they're getting some good dodging in there and they lose a lab but they also claim a tank and then they're back to NG hunting with this NG looking quite vulnerable and down he goes so we'll notice that this this expansion here has been denied these mixes are about to be taken whereas early doors the equivalent for team tea time has suffered no such disadvantage and is expanding quite fast here and there is a 30 well 20 now eco lead for team tea time these labs continue to make a mess of themselves but looks like the site will get enough spam in to see it off little bummer pops out from gingerbread but I don't know if it's going to get very far but look at this gingerbread he has a T2 land HQ already up and producing at six minutes that is pretty fast and it could give him an early advantage. I don't think anyone else has even started. Well, as I say that, literal, his teammate does. But I'm pretty sure that nobody on the northern team has even started Tech 2 land. There's a drop coming out here from early doors. And he's trying to land it here. But he'll be in for a nasty surprise when he meets Sims Com. This is an interesting drop here though. This little plateau doesn't have anything really tasty on it, but it could be a nice base on which to put up radar and towers, and that's exactly what Snoog is doing, immediately throwing up a anti-air turret. And thanks to the terrain, Gingerbread can't shoot up there. He is trying to defend with a quick edge build, but Snook has reacted fast with a plasma cannon of his own and shot down that turret. A nice T2 turret would be nice, but of course the only person with T2 land is Gingerbread, who is getting out mobile missile launches very early to counter that. That's a good play, because without T2, Snook won't be able to put up TMD. Good sight, pushing quite hard here. There is spam and turrets from Littoral, but even though Good sight is currently naked, he's got enough spam to be causing trouble and, for example, shutting down this expansion here. Well, it's equivalent on the other side. It's very safely in the hands of Sim. And speaking of Sim, Sim is pushing in and actually forcing Pepper back a bit. Getting some mechs killed, getting some engineers killed. Getting that radar would be nice as well if he can. And while Pepper's com will be able to handle it, enough damage has been done that I think this was worth it for Sim. But while his units have been at work over here, Early Doors com has got both the basic gun upgrades for the Eon and he is first to have an upgraded commander that we have three gun upgrades going down for the northern team here and those mobile missile launches are getting work done against Snoog's plateau but Snoog on his upgrade he might have been caught out because that's a lot of T2 for this early in the game and Snoog agrees and he is forced to cancel the upgrade and fall back. And the mobile missile launches add a bit of extra little persuasion to that. With that guncom and his spam, Early Doors is now creeping forward a little bit. And Simscom is down here, he's upgrading, he's getting the gun, that's nice, and he's assisting himself to it, but he feels a bit out of position, because while he's here, he can't stop early door stuff. That said, Literal's done the same thing regarding position, but he's got Gingerbread up here helping his defence, whereas 
Melee has come round here to assist the tight. So, different strategies there, we'll see who pays off. Meanwhile, Literal is raiding round the side with a bunch of labs mainly, and thanks to the position of Gesight Spam, he might be able to get some work done. We see some T2 coming out from Gesight, and speaking of that, the T2 from Gingerbread is just holding, which is allowing Snoog to get the gun upgrades back here. And Sim, having finished his gun upgrade, is coming back to help defend. Will he be in time, though, or will early doors have driven his spam back and be able to swarm the comp? Good sight also getting stuck in with his comp. He has gun. Melee's also has gun and could come a bit further forward, but he's coming back now because there's been a run by here from Gingerbread. And that's only T1 there, and this is all T2, so... Snoo can move units to counter, but he's likely to lose a bit of eco unless he can stop it. However, since these T2 tanks are faster than Melee's com, if I were Melee's, I would be bringing my com here to assist Gingerbread. Now, Gingerbread actually lost a decent amount of mixery to that lab raid from Literal, and he's pushing back now with a decent amount of spam. But he's going to have to worry about this eco, and there's still one lap actually doing damage. Speaking of ecos, they're looking pretty similar o overall. I'm seeing a few fluctuations, maybe either due to power stalling or reclaim, but overall, pretty similar. Team Tea Time does have a lead, but as you can see here, Team 11s are catching up. However, comms are engaging here, and we might need to keep an eye on this. Spam coming in from Sim, less spam coming in from early doors. Meanwhile, though, if Sight pushes in over here and Snoop pushes in over here, I think it's time for a bit of split screen. So on the left, Sim and Early Doors both down into the yellow, but look at this spam positioning from Sim, that's very good, and I think Early Doors might have a bit of a problem. And he goes down into the red, but meanwhile, there's a big fight going on over here, Early Doors at 1300, 1200 hit points, he's losing it, but look at Gingerbread's com feeling a bit out of position there compared to his spam, however, Early Doors... Boom, and let's immediately go back over here to focus Gingerbread. Gingerbread is deep, deep into the red and running away, but he's bringing in shields to block. And he gets another one over his comm. Those shots won't be doing anything, but he's only... And Snoog commits suicide. Snoog kills himself so that Gingerbread is taken out by the comm bomb which goes through the shield. I don't know if that were worth it on Snoog's part, but now we're down to three players for Team Elevenses and only two for Team Tea Time. But that might be about to change, because sure, let's note that Gatsight, with his com and with his T2, is getting deep into the old base belonging to Gingerbread, but up here, Melee's is being chased down by Literal, and Melee's has a spam assistance from Gatsight, but Gatsight is not really using it at the moment, and in fact it's blocking Melee's retreat. And so Literal is just able to unload onto Melee's, and boom, Melee's goes up, and we're down to 2v2. And a quick overview of the map shows us. Well, actually, a, a quick overview of the map shows us that we have T3 air out from both parties with gunships here and here, whalers, and that whaler is hitting on Sim, and Sim is already into the yellow thanks to his fight, and that might cause a bit of trouble for him. Pepper's com picked up in a transport, we'll, but we'll check back on that in a moment, because right now there are now two whalers, and I don't think Sim is getting out of there. Boom! 
Sim goes up in smoke as the whalers rain down fire upon him. But now Pepes has dropped off his com here. He's got the gun, but so has Gutzeit. Gutzeit also has four vets, and Gutzeit has a heap of T2 spam with him. So that might be a little bit of a problem for Pepes. He might have overstretched himself, but he brings in a strat, and the strat lands around perfectly on Gutzeit. But that doesn't really hurt Gutzeit much, thanks to his huge health and regen. And Pepes is looking in a bad position. And we see there, Gutzeit is also controlling ASFs that he's inherited, and they shoot down the strat so it doesn't come back. And what can Pepes do about it? Look at that, my dudes. The answer is nothing. Pepes is dead. And so we now have Literal holding the line for Team Tea Time. And Gutzeit alone holding the line for Team Elevenses. So it's a 1v1. And Gutzeit is all on his own in enemy territory, but there's no production capacity left around here to threaten him. There's Harveys coming out here, but they won't get there in time because Literal is under fire. Now he does have shields to support him, and he does have a PD to support him, so he might escape. And the spam from Gutzeit is beginning to ease up, and Gutzeit is now under attack by Harbies, but Gutzeit's got a lot more health left than Literal. Which way is it going to go? Well, this could make the difference because that might be some nice spam from Literal, but I don't see any anti-air in there. And the Strat comes in and takes down the shield, there's a Whaler picking away at him, and given that Literal is already lacking a bit of health, he may be in a bit of trouble. Good sight, however, is still in the green, and the Strat Bomb falls, and boom! Literal dies as the air power from Good Sight takes him out, and Team Elevens wins, Team Tea Time loses. Lots to talk about there. Lots to try and keep track of. We didn't have a chance to look at this rather powerful raid coming across from Literal in the top. If that had got anywhere, maybe it would have swung the game, but Literal died too soon. He should have had AA in there, in my opinion. If he had, that might have made the difference. And then that raid might have made the difference. But it didn't. Imagine the APM that those players suddenly needed when it got down to 1v1 with all of that stuff across the entire map. Anyway, go down in the comments below and tell me what you thought. While you're down there, don't forget to like, subscribe and obey. I'm the Commissar and I will see you next time.